Right, let's have a chat. Yes, my hair's down. What are you gonna do about it? Please don't unsubscribe. Are you getting comfortable? This can kind of be a little bit of a story time, but also a, a kind of serious thing. As you all know, I use my voice a lot like about eight hours at least a day. Um, and I didn't realize that that was maybe overdoing it. I kind of just thought I'd be fine. And I think I realized sometimes you need to give your voice a rest. My mom's told me that a lot. I thought she just wanted me to shut up because she thought I was annoying. Isn't that right, mom? Yes, dear. See? Because I've had this thing with my throat where I've been constantly going for these high notes and just not quite hitting them. Or like, there's just some strange section in your vocal range that's just blocked and it makes you unable to hit the notes. That started happening quite recently and there would be days where I could hit the notes, there'd be days where I couldn't. And I'd tell my friends, seriously, this is wrong, this isn't right, I know this isn't right. I can hit those notes, I know I can, I've done it for years. For some reason on some days I just can't. Everyone told me that, it's probably okay. A lot of people told me, oh no, it's probably fine. It's Probably nothing, it might be psychological, like you might just think that you can't do it when you actually can. I've always thought that I knew how I felt, but um, I think it was a fair shout, so I thought, okay, I'll just take that advice and run with it. So I continued singing, um, and everything was fine for a while, and then a couple weeks back it got worse again. Then I had my ear, nose, and throat specialist appointment that I'd made a while ago. Now here is the grim part. <laughs> this is grim. If you've had a camera stuck somewhere you don't want it to go, you're relating to me right now. I can, I can feel it. It's not nice. It's not nice. <laughs> Let me run you through the procedure. So, I walk in the door. I don't walk in the door. You know, it's not Harry Potter. <laughs> Piss off. Anyway. I walk through the door. I sit down. They talk to me. They give me a chat. And then uh, they say, okay, well, let's have a look. And at that point, I turn to Dad and I'm like... No. See, I've done this once before. And I know... <laughs> I know it's not fun. So I was like, oh no, I'm not sure I can do this. And they're like, no, 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 it's fine. It feels fine. It's all gonna help you out. And I was like, no, 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 I've had this before. And they're like, it's fine. I said, no, 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 no. I've, I've had, had this, this before. before. I, I know it's, it's not, not fine. fine. And they were just like, nope, no, it's fine. I think they didn't realize that there was nothing they could really say that would make me feel good about it. So she turns around to me and she says, look, You've come here for a reason. You should really find out what's wrong if you can. So you may as well do this. And I was like, okay. Uh, no, <laughs> but I finally came around to it and I was like, okay, let's do this because yeah, I should probably do it. Fine. And then the procedure began. Oh my gosh. So the feeling, let me try and express the feeling. It goes up your nostril. At that point, you're kind of tinging a little bit. You get a bit, get a bit. And then it breaches. It breaches that part there. It breaches your ridge and your ridge is like, no. No. Once it's done that, it gets really uncomfortable. It really kind of almost aches and it kind of has a bit of a pain. And then it feels like there's a part that it breaches and it goes behind your cheekbones almost. And it like <laughs> goes in. And then I just remember my right eye literally just going <laughs> like that. And it just a tear just rolls down. And at that point, it was horror. She was saying, like, breathe through your nose, breathe through your nose. And I was like, I was definitely expressing my pain. Then you can feel it start to go down your throat and it just goes through down to the tonsils and you can feel it kind of like dangling around and it's like really not nice. And then she says to me these simple words. Yep, you've got the beginning of nodules. And I never really thought that that would actually be something I had. And at this point, I was adamant that I was fine because of the whole like, you know, oh, it's psychological thing. But no, it wasn't fine. And I've been getting these indications it wasn't fine for a while. So I'm gonna to talk to you about those now because I definitely think that a lot of people may even potentially have it when they don't realize they have it. And it's better to find it earlier than it is later. And I know that I'm grateful that I had that thing, no matter how much I didn't enjoy it, <laughs> shoved up my nose and down to my throat. So some of the things you might feel if you potentially have nodules is you will feel like most of the things you ever do or ever say feels like effort. If it feels like you're forcing the words out, even when you're speaking like this, then that's not normal. You should be able to speak at this level and feel fine. It's just effort, I can't express it. Another indication is when you're doing your warm ups every morning and you're just not quite hitting that note and you know that the techniques that you're using are right and you know that they are the way that you should be doing it and yet it still feels restricted, then again, it could be an indication that you have nodules, I believe. In fact, give me a second. Let me get my friend over here to explain to you what nodules is and what some of the symptoms can be. Take it away. Hello. I'm your not-so-professional doctor who has to read symptoms off of Google to tell you what the symptoms are, guy. So, what are nodules in the throat, you may ask? Well, I've got the answer for you. Oh, <laughs> wait. I'm so lost. Okay, maybe I'm being really oblivious and silly here, but I don't understand why when I've looked up throat nodules. 
this lady has come up. Vocal cord nodules, sometimes called singer's nodules or nodes, result from repetitive overuse or misuse of the voice. These callus-like growths develop in the midpoint of the vocal folds. So that's what a nodule is. That's what other Cameron's got. He's got the beginnings of nodules. Or nodes, whatever you want to call it. Right. Come on, take it away again. Come on. Go on. Right, I'll tell you some of the symptoms considering I have a good idea now. Just a quick disclaimer, when I was 12 years old and I'd look into this kind of stuff, I would be scared about it, freak out about it, and then not go and get them checked, but worry about it all the time. So if you are one of those people, please don't worry about it. You probably most likely don't have it. Um, but if you are feeling some of these symptoms and you do really think that maybe something's wrong, it doesn't hurt to go check. Artists such as Sam Smith, Adele, John Mayer, Rod Stewart, Keith Urban and Justin Timberlake have all had nodules. Some say that Freddie Mercury had nodules, Elton John had nodules, Whitney Houston had nodules, and Mariah Carey had nodules, but I'm not too sure on those ones, so don't hold me to that. It's just the other artists that I said really did have them that had them, for sure. Some of the signs for vocal fold nodules are hoarseness, breathiness, a rough voice, a scratchy voice, a harsh sounding voice, shooting pain from ear to ear, which I haven't had, but you might have, who knows. Feeling like you have a lump in your throat, which I I don't feel, I don't think I feel, but who knows. I think I've run out of fingers. Neck pain, less ability to change pitch, which is definitely true. Voice and body tiredness, that's my niece, etc, etc, etc. The funny thing is, is that the first thing they ask me is, do you smoke or do you drink alcohol? And I do neither, and I've ended up with it, so... There's no chance of not potentially getting it, depending on how you live your life. At the end of the day, if it feels this way, it feels this way, and you can't help it. I wanted to talk about it because I wanted to raise awareness of it, to be honest, because I think that a lot of people don't realise that they could potentially have it. I had no idea, and I really didn't think I didn't have it, but here I am. The stage that we're at right now is they've referred me to uh, someone who's going to help me with my language and using my voice, and I think they're going to try and make sure that it swells down because it's only just the beginning of it, so I think that it can potentially dim down and go away, touch wood. But that's the next step. I'll keep you posted. I think I'm going to give my voice a rest for a while because all signs point to just resting it, really. So I'm going to do some drum covers and stuff, but I will definitely be doing busking covers and stuff and I'm gonna get straight back to that as soon as my throat is ready to go and I'm really hoping it's gonna be sooner rather than later and I might just do one anyway because I'm really impatient <laughs> and I will see you soon and my new single is coming out on the 25th of February with a music video so stay tuned for that I'll get back to it as soon as possible I hope you enjoyed this little video it's very informative but hopefully helped you out if you were wondering any of these things and I will see you very soon bye should be doing that bye it's just not the same, bye.